Residents of the Wickham, Sunnyside and Dunstan area won't need any reminding of the impact of the changes in bus services that have happened over the past few weeks. The 645 has gone, the X8 has gone and the 643 has been cut back. Now we, as your local councillors, have been carrying out a survey of what you think of the bus service changes and how they've impacted on you. And this is what you told us. Here in the Sunnyside estate, people are experiencing great problems being able to get to the Sunnyside Front Street area to get to the shops, the GP practice and to the post office. They're also experiencing problems getting to the Wickham Health Centre because the new number 40 bus service doesn't link directly in to bus services going through Wickham Village. And of course, there's no direct service now to Dunstan. Getting from here in the Sunnyside Road area to Central Gateshead remains a problem because there are still no direct bus services to Central Gateshead that don't go via the Metro Centre. I'm here on the Broadway in Wickham next to Thorny Close and in fact on one of the three bus shelters on the road here. Uh, but unfortunately we're not getting many buses stopping on this shelter because they're now on the wrong side of the road because since the 98 was introduced as a replacement to both the X7 and X8 the buses aren't actually stopping on this side of the road other than the few 643s that continue to survive after the changes. So if it's raining and you want to catch the bus the bus is coming from Sunnyside Road in that direction you've got to stay here in the dry and then dash right across to the bus shelter on the other side or just stay over on the other side and become an extremely wet bus passenger. Now the other problem that we have in this area is that with the changes to the X7 and X8 and the new 98 bus service actually goes via Falside Park. Now it, the predecessor services always did that but you had them running in both directions. So if you're travelling from the Broadway estate here and want to get to Wickham Village you've got the whole of Fellside Park to have to travel through as well. And finally, on the, this, this estate, the other problem is that we've now lost the direct link to the health centre. You've got to get on the bus here, go via Fellside Park, and get off in Wickham Village at the council offices. Previously, you could get a bus from here, straight down uh, Rectory Lane, and get off at the bus stop right next to the health centre. We can't do that any longer. I'm here on the Watergate Estate in Wickham and here the 643 is quite a lifeline service going through the, to the heart of the estate and of course people here are having to live with the fact that uh, the bus service itself, the overall number of services on the 643 has been reduced. I'm here in Dunstan Hill and the problem that we have here is that with the loss of the 645 there's no through service in this part of the estate. So if you live in the Nightside Gardens area, halfway down the bank, you've either got to walk right the way up to Wickham Highway to get a bus, or go right the way down into Dunstan Village to pick up a bus. And that's an awful long walk on a very steep bank. Twenty years ago, local councils themselves controlled the bus services. They were able to set their own fares, set the service levels, set the routes and timetables. Now that power was taken away from councils in 1986 and bus companies themselves were able to set their own timetables and service levels and so on. Now there were expected to be some benefits from that change. There was expected to be more competition on bus routes, more people were able to have access to bus services and competition was meant to keep the fares down and the service levels high. Frankly, very little of that has happened and many people now feel that there's a need to bring back some form of re-regulation of bus services. Now, the government has resisted that move for the past nine years, but last month the Labour Party announced, in fact it was their Transport Secretary, Douglas Alexander, announced that the government are now actually looking again at some form of bus re-regulation. Now, we welcome that, although I've got to say it's a cautious welcome, and it's for two reasons why we're cautious. First of all, we have seen no details whatsoever about what they're proposing, and the devil will be in the details. It may be that there's a lot of talk about deregulation and giving local authorities and local people the opportunity to control bus services, but the power might actually be unusable. 
And secondly, it may well be that the government does give councils the power to control bus services, but if it doesn't give them the financial means, then the whole exercise is meaningless. And one of my fears is that we will have a repeat of what happened earlier this year when the government introduced free uh, off-peak travel for pensioners, but in town and where they didn't give us the money to be able to pay for it properly. And that caused chaos and an awful lot of bus cuts in town and where. Now, as I said, the devil will be in the detail. And it's over here in Parliament, uh, hopefully within the coming session, that the details will be decided and the legislation will be passed. And let's hope on this one the politicians haven't missed the bus.